and you're watching Manhouse TV, and we're down here in the dungeons of BB King's live, right here with the Maverick Soul Hour with Tommy Marr, Madhouse TV. I'm, uh, I spot another big, big biggie here, Mr. Jerry Velez. Oh, Jerry, how are you, buddy? How you doing, my man? It's wonderful to be on your show. Now, Jerry used to be a percussionist for Jimmy. I still Back am, in yeah. the day, mm -hmm. right? I and, started uh, out with Jimmy. It was my first professional gig, and it was my birthday. And um, I was the first percussionist, and then we brought in Jumo a little bit after that. Right. And it was the beginning of really fusion music. Right. I'm one of the original members of a group called Spira Gyra, and we're the oh, best-selling sure. jazz group, sure. contemporary jazz group of all time. But that was the beginning. We used to hang out with Miles Davis and do all this fusion stuff. Right. <clears throat> and, you know, I was playing percussion. I said to Jimmy, where do I fit in with your loud music, bro? And he said, no, I'm doing something different. It's going to have a lot of different rhythms and a lot of different music. I said, okay, let's check it out. Now, what years was, was this was uh, 68, the end of 67, 68, at, at um, uh, Steve Paul's scene. That's oh, I remember, sure. Remember? Everybody well, I, I, met, I met Jimmy at, at The Generation. Okay. I was there all the time, Short-lived, right. but I, did, I got to sit with him and hang out with him, and it was very right. cool. Right. Well, I, we had the house upstate. So at the time, I was living with twins, and, I told, and Jimmy took off with one. Wait, and you we, were living with twins? I was for four, yeah, four and a half years. I knew, I knew, you had that look, you had that look. <laughs> so, but, you know, we, I remember the generation because that was one of, the, one of the few times Jimmy and I had arguments. There was an argument over a girl. Well, the night I was there with him, he actually jumped up on stage with Buddy Guy. Right. And started jamming with Buddy. Well, Buddy's a monster. Yeah. To this day, he's a fantastic. Well, you know, I've been, I, I'm a musical director for a lot of things in New York. I've been very blessed. I work with Elton John, Stevie Wonder, Patti LaBelle, Slash, Kid Rock. Still are you, today. Are you yeah. from New York? I'm originally from the Bronx. So maybe Bronx, we can get you out to the island, do my show one night. Sure. Would you be interested? Yeah, well, I live in Hawaii now. I moved to Hawaii, but I'm back and forth. I have a house and a, a condo in Hoboken. Okay. And I'm a New York boy. So you, know, you go to Hawaii, you're there for a little while. After a while, it's okay. You get island paralysis. And that's like... My brother uh, used to live in Hawaii. I know. Uh, I know. So it's, it's, it's great. You know, my yeah. wife's there. She, yeah. We're working through some issues with her, and she loves it there. So we moved there, got her set up, and now it's time to come back to reality. To keep, right? Get a reality the, check. Keep the wife happy. Keep Absolutely. The wife happy and wife, you, happy and you life. you can still come back for your Jones, right? Oh, I got to come back and play. You know, and I'm, I'm recording. I'm, I work uh, out in the island. I work with Mick Fleetwood in uh, his Island Rumors band that I work with him in that. Uh-oh. And, uh, you know, like I said, I work with uh, Slash. We're work, uh, working on something now that cool. we're going to take overseas. And I do most of my stuff in Europe because they're the only people that pay anymore, Europe and Asia. So that's well, what I've been doing. We would love to uh, leave you with an open invitation anytime. We do a live show Monday. Actually, we just had, uh, well, Neville's, been, oh, Nev Neville's done the show oh. twice. We had the chocolate fudge. We had the vanilla fudge. Oh, we had, come on. Uh, that's great. Uh, G Godfrey Townsend. We had that's we have everybody mine, else. But guy. Oh, we would yeah. love you to come out if you're ever out in the island. We'd, right. when we, we'd do live Monday up, nights. I'll come in it's an hour show. show Monday nights. So we will give you a card and uh, and uh, now what what songs are you gonna be playing tonight? I have uh, I just came I brought some stuff I'm leaving tomorrow to go back You're home. Just jamming. Yeah and, and uh, you know David's a buddy of mine so I called David to say I'm in town if you want me to come I'll bring some drums I'll sit in with the boys I've I worked with Vernon Reed I put together some bands I took to South Beach Miami. Right. Vernon wasn't one of them. Slash was in another one. It was like an all star band that mm -hmm. I. And I still do all that kind of stuff. Because, you know, you got to put everybody together. Everybody yeah, brings yeah. a couple of thousand from this guy, a couple of thousand, 500. And before you know it, you have a night's worth of music, you right, know, and, right. and uh, that pays the bills. Right. So that's what we've been doing. Well, I love, I love that you still have it, man. I mean, you still oh. got the excitement. Oh, the yeah. The blood is flowing. Yeah. You're ready to go. It's an exciting night here at BB Kings. I mean, looking forward what, what, to it. What a great thing. I mean, I was just telling the young lady I just interviewed that, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know, I, I, I seen Jimmy a few times, like the Cafe Juan at, and right. I saw him at the Generation. But my first concert was Woodstock. All that right. was my first concert. You know, my first big concert. Well, that was you know, the first not, big not concert. Not the village. Yeah, right. You know, the first big concert. So, I mean, I, I feel like I have a history, and I really feel great about being here. And it's been it's, well, it's look, a pleasure look to meet you. You are history yourself. Come on. Uh, sharp, yeah. Sharp dressed man. My head. Oh, my head. That's my uh, email address. What? Sharp dressed man. <laughs> very cool. Very cool. Very nice. To it was you. a pleasure. We'll get you a card. And I'll see you again. I'm going to be on the show again. You are definitely going to be on this show. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Pleasure Absolutely. To meet you. Okay. Pleasure. Right, Good luck. There you have it. There you have it. Here we are at Madhouse with Andre LaSalle. Andre, big yes, night sir. tonight, huh? I love doing this stuff. It is a big night. Got a lot of special people here. 
Uh, my friend Vernon Reed came out to play with yeah, I just us. Was, I was just talking with Vernon. Yeah, and, and then we got Randy Hansen, who's probably the best, un, does the best understanding version of the Hendrix stuff. It really comes across true, you know, with, with a right. lot of integrity. Right. And that's the thing. And then we got Kate, you know, on, on bass. He's a up and young, you know, up, upcoming bass player, right. which you saw here. And then, we, then all of a sudden, it's like we put out the good vibes, and then somebody like Juma Sultan comes up. I, look, I, I saw him. I met him for the first time See last night. That was like, you know, it's like one of those things where you walk some walk past somebody like three steps, and then you get like the whiplash. It's like, did I? You feel that? But you say, did I see what I just saw? You know, <laughs> you walk in fast, and the next thing you know, you turn around. Same thing with the Aleems also. But I mean, it's like, and then and then Jerry Valles comes in, and so we actually have a lot of the people that were part of the actual right. foundation. Right. Now I'm a person who really likes Jimmy, but you can't learn anything more than learning from the people who helped set the foundation to like, what was you like know, my man over here. What, what, what had to be done? Like the thing that changed Jimmy's sound was that funk. Yeah, was the groove. The groove changed everything. Sure, so you can hear it from the first. You know, the, the, the are you experiencing Axis Bold as love? But when it comes into that next move, when he starts going into Electric Lady Line and all those other live things like Band of Gypsies, bananas. Believe me, I lived it. I know. I, I could imagine, I, I'm man. I'm telling you, man. I envy you. I. <laughs> it's it's just something that never leaves you. It yeah. never leaves you. You know, I don't care how many times you heard a song or whatever. It's just, as soon as one comes on, it's yeah. just it takes you somewhere good. It takes you know, you, man. Yeah. it takes you somewhere you. good. But uh, I want to thank you so much. And uh, thank you for having me. And now you're orchestrating this now. Yes, you know, we're, I'm the one, I'll be the musical director and making sure that everything goes as smooth as possible. <laughs> A lot of good surprises. I'll get some surprises. I didn't well, talk that's about good. this. So yes. That's good. Some, of, sometimes like a Cracker Jack out. box. There you go. Okay. <laughs> you never know what you're going to get yes. inside. Yes, right. But thanks so much. Thank you so thanks much for, for having on. me. You got okay, it. Have a great you. night. Bye-bye. All right. Here we are again. Madhouse TV, the Maverick Soul Hour with Tommy Marr. And again, I get to introduce my wonderful friend, Mr. Juma Sultan, who played percussion with Jimmy at Woodstock. And we did you, uh, we had oh, a, we had with the Chocolate with, Fudge right. not too long ago right here. Fudge, and right. Uh, that was a great right. night, too. Oh, yeah. And this is going to be a great night because oh, in the spirit, everyone's very exciting, here Very exciting, very exciting, very exciting. Being experienced. I saw, know? I actually saw you, I, I knew, I had a heads up today, I saw on Facebook that you were coming. So I was like, oh, all right, okay. my man is coming. Oh, yeah. well, so it's always great to see you. And you do have to come out and do the show. I will. You I do will. have to I will. come out. I will be we out would love there. to have you come out there. Are you going to be playing it all tonight or are you just hanging? Possibly, most likely, most oh, likely great. I will play. I hope so. Uh, I've been so. invited to. That's well, I, I hope so. Okay. You All right. Okay. Because well, uh, we love you, man. Love you too, man. All right. Be well. Be okay. well. Thank you. Mr. Juma Sultan, Madhouse TV. You know, Jimmy was born Johnny Allen Hendricks. And for five years they called him Johnny. And my dad came home from the war. They said, I'll change your name to James Marshall Hendricks. And little Johnny said, why, Daddy? My daddy said, because that's the name of your mama's boyfriend. So they call him Jimmy. So Jimmy can wind it. So he said, I want to be my own name up. So my new name is Buster. It's still happening. This place is electrifying with Madhouse TV. We have some special guests coming up. Oh, here he is. Here he is. Randy, how are you? All right. You're looking slick, man. You oh, are looking you. You know, well, you like a Well, you soul. know, it's a birthday party, so we got to get up for it. There you go. You look pretty slick, too. Well, you know, the name of the show is the Maverick Soul Hour, so... All right. Here we go. All right. The I'm two glad to be on the Maverick Soul Hour. And you got your Jimmy hat on and everything is looking good. So <laughs> yeah. what are you going to be doing tonight? 
Um, let me see. <laughs> We're gonna be doing Crosstown Traffic, Lover Confusion, Rainy Day Dreamways, Raining Still Dreaming, 1983, Beginnings, Freedom, Isabella, Axis Bowl oh, is wow. Love, Dolly Dagger, and Spanish Castle Magic. Super. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Awesome. Unless we run out of time. <laughs> Which ah, well, they'll going. make time for you, that's for sure. <laughs> if things are going so, good, maybe people forget about time. What's your feel? What's your feel? You feeling it? Oh, you yeah. It's going to be really it's, fun. It's exciting. It's oh, yeah. So you see Juma you know, marijuana is legal in Washington now. Really? Yeah. Are we in Washington now? No, no, oh. but it's legal yeah. there, oh. <laughs> which is the beginning. Is there a BB Kings in Washington? That's why we're going to play <laughs> beginnings, right? <laughs> <laughs> and endings. Yeah. There you go. But... uh we wish you all luck in the world tonight, and uh, we also would love to uh, extend an in uh, invitation to you to come out and do the show if you're ever on Long Island. We'll do it when Monday night's live. I'd be honored. We would love to have you come out. Anytime. We would love to have you come out. I, I love you're you. welcome anytime. We'll get you a card, and uh, we'll bring you right out to the Madhouse. All right. Because Madhouse TV is where it's at. That's you know right. what I mean? Madhouse TV. There it is. All right, my man. Have a great night. Blow them away tonight, and do your thing, man. Right. Do your thing. Right. You're looking sharp. I hey, like it. Thank you. All right. See now, see, that's what I'm talking about right there. That's what I, that's what I want. That's what I want. All right.
for the devil to right now, but this song is called Purple Planet. Let's go! All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are live from BB Kings at Madhouse TV. The Maverick Soul Hour with Tommy Marr, and standing right here, my main man, Mr. Leon Hendricks. He Mad, just Madhouse TV. The Maverick Soul Hour. <laughs> uh, we just Leon's got to get a little taste. Uh, he just came off. He just came off stage. He's hot. He's rocking. He just rocked the house here with some really good tunes. So how did it feel, man? Well, you want the truth? I want to know how your soul's feeling right now. That's what my I soul is know. good because it's Jimmy's birthday. That's right. He's 70, and my soul is always good when I come to New York and play at BB Kings for the last five years. <laughs> It must be it must be a thrill though. I mean, with all it the is. excitement, all the people wow. that are here, I know. it's electrifying. And sometimes you know, I'm embarrassed because people are going, Leah, sign you, take a picture. I'm going, wait a minute, I played a horrible gig, <laughs> but evidently it sounded better outside than it did on stage. Yeah. No sound check. It does. Yeah. I know. Well, I just had somebody shake my hand because I because I met him. Oh. Say, could I shake your hand? Because I met him. Okay, so, I won't. So okay. Look at you, you're a little, I'll be. I'll be good. No, you. You were great, man. You and were by the way, I have. A, I have a new book out called oh, pull, Jimi Hendrix, A Brother's Story. And it. It's a story about when me and Jimmy were were kids and how he became Jimmy. All the books that have been written about after he got famous, with the theories, you know, the mathematical, you know, calculations of why he plays music and stuff like that. But it's called uh, Jimmy Hendrix, a brother's story, and read it. It's good. And where it's can got we, five stores. Where can they buy Barnes it? Barnes & Noble, Kindle. Yeah, Amazon? Right, Amazon? Good. Yeah, Amazon.com. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, yeah, man. It's good. I got five star. Come on. It's like good. Because I, I even got a, uh, you know, I was at Woodstock, uh -huh. so I did get to see Jimmy on Monday. And uh, I have a, uh, I have a, a page on Facebook, which I would love you to join, because I know a few of my friends are on there, which, uh, uh, that's all right. That's all right, as long as it comes from his soul, it's cool. In Woodstock, I was in the stockade in the Army. There you go. In jail, because Jimmy played the Star Spangled Banner, and they thought it was, like, treasonous. And they found out that I was his brother. I was peeling potatoes, peeling potatoes for six months. <laughs> Better get shot at. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's uh, you should come on. We got I got a page called the Woodstock Guru. Okay. Because I, I you know I do the reunions. We'd love you to come up and do a reunion. At Yazga's, Where at here? Yazga's farm. In New York. Every every year, every year. Uh, just call me. I will call get Call David. And and, and yeah. the next time you're on uh, on the island, well, could we come? Could you come out and do a, a, a full show? I will do if I have my own band. I don't like these. No, we'll just sit down like Johnny Carson. Go. Yeah. From Florida, Chicago, yeah. you know what I'm talking about? And show up here and go. Let's play. We, we practice your songs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I said, okay. Well, let me tell you, let me tell you, you fired up the stage tonight. It was a great honor to even watch you. It's a great honor to meet you. It's a great honor to talk to you. And I mean, like I told you, I did, I did get to meet your brother. And we sat down for four hours in a generation one night. And then he jumped up and was jamming with uh, Buddy Guy. I know. And I told Buddy Guy that story. And he just <laughs> was stunned because it was like, you're Listen, still alive? <laughs> Listen, when I was on tour with Jimmy, he'd play a concert all night. After the concert, he'd look around and who famous in there said, let's go jam. Let's go jam. Let's oh, yeah. Go. Go to Little Richard's studio, you know, Little Richard, or something like that. But then Little Richard was like, he was just looking too much at my crotch and shit. <laughs> He's like, he was the man, though, Little Richard. He, I love Little Richard. I love Little Jimmy Richard. loved him too. Yeah, you know, he but was he great. got, but uh, he fired Jimmy because Jimmy was too pretty. Well, you know, he had the can't upstage Little you Richard. Know, the female. I just saw him not too long ago, probably about three Me too. years ago. I just ago. saw him at, uh, in L.A. last week at. Uh, at Roscoe's, chicken really? and waffles. How is his health, all right? Yeah. His legs are bad, right? He, he looks good. 
because he's got like two inches of makeup on him. <laughs> like 15 feet away, he looks like, whoa, look, Richard, but you get close. Yeah. Whoa, you go. What's he's up? big Richard now. What's up, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> Are you okay? Can you smile without cracking that? Okay, I'm sorry, Lil. Hey, Lil nah, Richard, he's, did he's you ever hear this? One of the I greatest ever lived. I saw you in 1959. I took Jimmy to your house because uh, Lil Richard came to see his, his auntie in Seattle, Washington one night. Uh, Mrs. Pettyman, you know, uh, Rich, Lil Richard's sister. And so, uh, and he became a preacher at the Goodwill Baptist Church and he preached like for two days and me and Buster, my brother, you know, we tried to get all cleaned up and stuff like that. Right. We got mismatched tennis shoes and shit. And, um, but then uh, his preaching days only lasted. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I ain't making no money preaching. Yeah, but you don't have to pay no taxes. <laughs> yeah, but that was over. But yeah. anyway, Lil Richard, you ever see this? I love you. And he, mem he remembered me when he came to Seattle one time, like just like two years ago. Right. He's, I said, were you in Seattle in 1958? He goes, no, that was 1959. So, so his mind is still sharp, so it's all good. <laughs> well, I'll tell you. How about a little Madhouse TV? Can you dig a little Madhouse TV? Let me see it. No, man, I want you to tell me, tell me. I'm coming to see the Madhouse TV. So what's I do? Like, what do you want me to do, Bo? I just want you to come out when you're ready. When you're on the island, I'd love you to come out and do my show. Okay. And, uh, uh, we've had a lot. We had, the, we had the chocolate fudge out on the show. We had the vanilla fudge on the I show. I will come. Had, Where is it? It's out on the, in West Islip on, on the island. But we'll, we'll, uh, we'll come get you. Are you talking about, see, when you talk about island, I'm thinking Long. Big Bench Island in Seattle. Yeah. Long. You're talking about Long Island? Long. Long Island. We got Long Beach. <laughs> yeah, we got that too. Okay. Yeah, I will. It got taken away. Uh, call David. I will. I definitely you know, will. You know, and I'll, I'll be happy to do anything because I've been, I've been, man, I just got back from Europe. Thank you, Jimmy. Give me a job. I got no money because my little sister, you know, my little sister, I my know. adopted sister, Japanese little bitch, got power of attorney over my dad surreptitiously. I know. I know this Cut story. me out of 25 million. But I'm fine because I have a good time. I'm, I'm having a you life. You still of, got that? Hell yeah. Shit, yeah. Fuck that. Fuck the money. That's right. I get the like honey. Like Evil Knievel said. If huh? God, like Evil Knievel said, if God wanted you to take it with you, he would have put little hands on it. Exactly. And if I would have <laughs> got the money, I never would have start playing guitar or doing shit. That's you know? right. That's so right. So I'm, I'm very happy. Well, you did it tonight, my man, and it is a great honor to meet you. It really, truly is. And we really would love you to come out to Madhouse, the Maverick Soul Hour, and uh, God bless you. And uh, just, give me a, just give me a ticket, plane ticket. You, I'll be there. We'll get you. You got barbecue? We Lobster, got we got whatever you need. Clams. Tom, we good? We got everything from? <laughs> You're in, man. You're in. All right, buddy. Thank you very much. It's great. It's great show.
It is pandemonium here at BB King's for Jimmy's 70th birthday. I have with me now Jasmine, who is Leon's woman. Correct? Yes. What do you think with, about the night so far? How's it going? I love it. It's, it's amazing, wonderful. right? It's great. Yes, it's wonderful. Um, everybody's having a great time. They're fantastic musicians here. Yeah. It's going really well. No, it is. And, and now, um, did you come out with from, from Seattle or um, L.A.? Leon and I, we live in Los Angeles. Right. And uh, we came here from Los Angeles, yes, every okay. year. Okay. But well, I was event. just telling Leon that I actually had the privilege of sitting down with Jimmy for a few hours at the Generation oh, years, and years and years and years and years ago. And... Uh, it was. It was, and then later on, he had jumped up on a stage with Buddy Guy, and uh, it was. It's just something. And then I saw him at Woodstock too. So I, I seen him. I seen him a few believe, times. I cannot believe how many people knew Jimmy personally. Well, I didn't know him, but given, I did get to sit down with him and talk to him for four hours. Given that he died at 27, right? You would think how many people could he have known? Right. But I have met so many people that met him and knew him and. Um, it's hard to imagine. Because he'll never be without, we'll never be without him. Yes. We never will. We never will. And he's always in our heart and our soul. And uh, who doesn't love Jimi Hendrix? That's all I got to say, you know? Sure. So uh, I would like to thank you for stopping by at Madhouse TV, the Maverick Soul Hour with Tommy Marr. I hope you enjoy the rest of the night. It's been great. I mean, we're just getting rolling. There's some good things here. Some. Like you said, some great bands coming up. So uh, yes. enjoy tonight. And again, thank you so much for stopping in. Thank you. Madhouse, what can I tell you? We have everybody here. Everybody's here. We'll be right back with some more Maverick Soul with Tommy Marr. All right, we're here. The Maverick Soul Hour with Tommy Marr on Madhouse TV. I'm with the producer of the show, Mr. David Kramer. David, what a night. I must say, I got to tell you, I mean, I can't, I mean, just, just staying backstage here and who's coming by and who's playing and who's playing with who, it's, it's quite amazing. You put a great gig together and uh, I think it's awesome. I think I, I really, I thank you for putting it together because, I mean, you know. Thank you, Tommy. I mean, what a beautiful way to celebrate such a great man's. Uh, thank Tommy. If it wasn't for Tommy, don't thank no me. Show. Don't thank me. <laughs> thank me. You're the guy. So what do you think so far? How are we doing so far? We're having a good time. Yeah, it's good. I think the hurricane hurt the sales, though, because uh, we didn't uh, sell a lot of tickets tonight, unfortunately. It's such well, a great show. Well, I'll tell but, you, there's uh, a lot of spirit here. It's a shame that more people ain't seeing all these cats that showed up here. Yeah. Well, everything happens for whatever reason it happens for, but the, I think they the people that have the soul and the heart and uh, the spirit are here to see it. So, uh, you know, I mean, I know I'm glad I'm here. Hopefully. Are you glad you're here? Yeah, I still got my house, you know. I, yeah, that's Hurricane right. didn't do any damage, so I guess I'm pretty well, fucking lucky. Well, you're an lucky. old Massapico guy, right? I guess I'm pretty lucky. Let's cut that part out. <laughs> no, this is internet, man. We can do that. Oh, you can? <laughs> yeah. Okay. But uh, now, you are you flying out tonight, tomorrow? Oh, I live in New York. No, I know, but weren't you flying to Sweden or no, Seattle? No, these guys are from Sweden. Leon Hendricks is going back to Seattle. Oh, I thought That's you told me on the phone, though, that you were going back with him. No, no, no. Oh, well, you know... We Leon's would, doing we... the show in Seattle, though, like uh, on Jimmy's birthday. Well, we would love to invite you anytime you want. We're right at West Islip, and uh, we do a live show every Monday, the Maverick Soul Hour, and you are definitely a Maverick Soul. Thank you, and Tommy. I, and I, I couldn't thank you enough right. for inviting us. I, I really, really, truly appreciate it. It was... It's... You know, to me, I told you on the phone, you know... I got to meet the man, so yeah, it's it's a pr privilege to be here. So, cool. I cool. thank you, and I and I know all these people here. Thank you. I think it's a great, phenomenal thing, and uh, awesome. Yeah, awesome. thanks, man. So, God bless enjoy the, the rest people of the that uh, survived the, the hurricane. Yeah, right? definitely, for sure. Some people still have no electricity back. Oh, believe me, we're out there. We we know. We yeah. know. We know. Tom's house is underwater. He knows. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it was a rough ride, but New Yorkers will, will be all right. We'll make it. Yeah. Right? But we'd love to have you come out and do the show anytime you want. Thanks, you know? Tom. It was a pleasure. Thank you, David. Pleasure to meet you. Pleasure. Okay. Madhouse, later. Here we are, Madhouse TV, backstage at BB King's with a singer that just, I, I mean, I saw her a couple of years ago with Big Brother and the Holding Company. 
Sophia Ramos. Now, <laughs> you got a third name now? No. No? You keeping it? Yeah, yeah. You just yeah. had a baby, though? Yeah, just yeah, had a baby. Yeah, beautiful. I saw the Thank picture you. of the baby. <laughs> um, I got to tell you something, and, and I, I have witnesses right here in this, in this alleyway that we're in here that could attest to this. This woman has a voice I've never heard before in my entire, <laughs> and I mean that sincerely. And you guys that know me out there, this woman blew me away. She hit notes I don't even think anybody has ever hit, ever. Oh, when sweet. you did Summertime, dear God, Thank dear you. God, Thank it you. was amazing. Thank you was so amazing. much. So what do you think of this night? I, it's awesome. I, I, I was, you know, the, I was supposed to be the love child of Jimmy and Janice, right. really, what happened. I don't know. They both croaked before I could come out, you know. But uh, so this is really personal to me, Jimmy's music. And, and so it's a real honor to be here and, you know, and, and do the song some some justice and give well, some female power. I'll tell you something. I'm, I'm going to go on record here because this is this is going to go on TV and about probably about 60,000 people are going to see this. Right. But I'm going to tell you something. I have a movie in the works right now. And it's going to be big. It's going to be produced by a guy named Mark Lipsky, which did Coming to America, Harlem Nights, Boomerang, awesome. The Nutty Professor, you name all, all Eddie right. Murphy movies. The guy is the biggest. And there's a part that I have in this movie. And you can ask that young lady, that blonde lady right there, that from the get-go, I said, Sophia Ramos All right. is the person to play that part. I'm there, baby. Because it's Janice. All right! But, well, I can't go into the whole thing. You can't go into the but whole thing. It will be you, but then you will be. They'll make me white? Will it be my white face debut? Uh, <laughs> you'll, be, you'll be what we want you hot to be. Hot tamales in the red I'm hot. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. But am I lying, Janine? I know you're back there. Am I lying? Oh, my God, that From would be day awesome. one. From, it's going to be big, and it's oh, going to be soon. Be, but I fantastic. always had you in my mind for that. Oh, thank from day you. one, from the first note I ever heard you sing, thank you. you are an amazing, thank amazing so singer. It's so amazing. great to see you. And thank you so much thank for stopping you. by. Great <laughs> seeing you, and good luck with that baby. Yes, thank you so God much. God bless. Thank okay, you. Bye, America. Hey, here we are with Mr. Bernard Reed, right back here at backstage at BB King's for Jimmy's 70th birthday. Same as it ever was. So, what do you think? What's the vibe? It's I have good, stopped right? thinking. <laughs> I've stopped thinking about five tunes ago. I'm just waiting to go on, and uh, uh, I have a lot of thoughts about Jimmy. You know, I mean, I love his music. I love what he he did for, I mean, for the world of music. Yeah. And. Um, He's a singular kind of dude. I know. I mean, he was very special. I mean, I mean, everybody's... I actually just looked at a, a video of a show that he did, and it was at a college, and somebody had a video camera, and it was the experience with uh, Mitch Mitchell and Noel right. Redding. And the show was, was great. It was, it, was, it was a great show, but it was so... Um, Relax. He's talking to the audience. He's tuning his guitar, and he's like doing his thing. And it was just so natural. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he was. I, I, I actually got to talk to him for like four hours I one can, night. A degeneration. I can, I can only imagine. A degeneration. I can only imagine what it was like. And it was just like how you always, you know, oh, like, like, wow, like, wow, groovy, man. You know, like everything was just cool. You know? He was, a, he was, a, he was a deep he guy. Deep, deep, deep guy. You know what's the thing about Jim Hendrix is that. Um, you can focus on him the way he played guitar. Right. And the way he played guitar was a seismic shift right. in the role of the guitar in rock and roll. Like you really, the whole idea of the a guitar hero, lead guitarist thing, really, I mean, there have been people that play lead guitar, but he embodied, like it changed the right. idea of it. Without question, without question. But then the other side of it is the songs. You know, he created a context for his guitar playing. And the songs have just stood the test of time because they're amazing. And the songs cover emotionally the range of what they talk about is... Yeah, spiritual. It's I mean, really, he doesn't leave anything out. Right. And he doesn't pretend... Like his music, as as far as it being psychedelic and all like that, I mean, Deep. a lot of his music, you know, like the Wind Cries Mary is not a happy song, no. you know? I mean, it's a very, I mean, or, or Castle's Made of Sand. A Castle's Made of Sand is like, like the whole idea of living with hope and living on hope. He like completely undercuts that. Like when he talks about, you know, there's a lady, girl in a wheelchair and she sees a ship 
and she thinks the golden ship is coming my way. She says, the ship has nothing to do with you. <laughs> and, she, and the ship just kept on going. And so castles made out of sand slip into the sea eventually. And it was just... But it's also awesome that he said that. It's also awesome that he was honest about the way the world can be. From his true feelings, yeah. From his true feelings. So he, on the one hand, talked about otherworldly stuff, but he also talked about very, very real, very real stuff. He was a smart guy. He was, he a, was smart a really guy. smart guy. He was really smart about people. Yes. And the other thing, too, was that he brought together rhythm and blues, blues, rock and roll, new technology. He brought all of it together. Like, the wah-wah pedal existed, but <laughs> the wah-wah pedal, like, he changed the role of the wah-wah pedal, right? I mean... Things, changed everything. Like, the Octavia, like, the stuff he did in the studio, right? Like, he didn't have that many tracks. Right. So you had to commit. You, you're going to make a sound. You have to... This is the sound you're making because you don't have 24 tracks. When he made records, they had four tracks or eight tracks. That's it. Right. A lot of these records were on two tracks. So think about the records, like, Pet Sounds, Right? Right. Or or you think about uh, 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 Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. <laughs> These records were made like four tracks. Right. Electric Ladyland was done like four like four tracks or eight tracks. Yeah. So they yeah, had to bounce. Fast. They had to do what they were doing. They couldn't not do so. His records sound like uh, And the Gods Made Love. You know, they sound otherworldly. But those records were done with a very, he had to, you know, this has to be it. And he did it. Because we, you know, we got it like that. So, it's it's really amazing what he what he managed to do. Because you know he came from a situation where he wasn't supposed to be able to do anything. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, sure. I, I mean, he was a he was a guitar player in an R and B band. You know, the singer is the king. Right. He was like, Wilson Pickett. Right? You know, he played with Wilson Pickett. He played. He got kicked out of Little Richard's band. Yeah, Little Richard, I'm the star. <laughs> what you think you're doing? Yeah. I was, you know what I mean? He plays the Isley Brothers, and they were cool with him, but. He had to do his thing, and eventually, man, you know, he gave his gift to the world. Eventually, somebody heard him and said, you are doing something special, right? And, uh, and, uh, and you know, my thing with Jimi Hendrix is, you know, I'm not so much on playing like him. Right. You know, that doesn't interest me so much, but I love what his he vibe. did. I love his music. I love what he did. But I'm, like, there are better, there are people better, much better at playing exactly, exactly like him. I don't, I, don't, I don't even remember. But the same, like, Jimmy Page, too, is, is, is in the same. Everybody yeah. says sloppy, but, you know, no, he's, but he's one of the he best does, ever. No, because he created his right. thing. That's right. He created it. That's so right. So you can, comp you, it's not about. Comparing to anything. There are a lot of people that do things exactly, but they're not creating right. anything. I agree. Like, to create something from whole cloth. Like, I'm going to say this thing you ain't never heard before. That's very rare, because most people are afraid, right? And here's my other thing. Everybody is the Jimi Hendrix of something. I'm going to look at the camera and say this. Everybody is the Jimi Hendrix of something. Now, the problem is, and the issue is, people don't find out what they the Jimi Hendrix of. So maybe your thing is cooking, or photography, or writing. And maybe you're an accountant, but you always wanted to tell jokes. And, right. and the difference in people's lives is, who's going to take the weight and do that thing and become the Jimi Hendrix of the thing that they're supposed to be. Like, Jimi Hendrix actually became the Jimi Hendrix of the thing he became. He did it, right? So, a lot of people are barking up the wrong tree. You yeah, know, the I parents agree. told them this, they told them that. You're white, you're black, you're woman, you're gay, you know, you can't do this, you can't do that. And here's the thing, like I said, everybody is the Jimi Hendrix of something. So the, the, the mission is find out what you the Jimi Hendrix of. That's yep. the whole yep. thing. But that's, then again, you know, it. It's still living, and that's why everybody's here tonight. That's the whole point. And uh, the spirit is here. And I mean, I mean, I know every time I hear one of his songs on the radio, it excites me. Man, you know, I mean, I was lucky to live through that. You know, I lived through it. So I mean, it was a part of my life. I can't even imagine. Life, I was know? too young, but I can't imagine. Like you, like Monterey Pop. Like the people that were sit sitting in the, they, they, there was nothing to compare it to. Yeah, really. I mean, what? Like, okay, Screaming Jay Hawkins came out of a coffin. This cat burnt his guitar. He's just like, he did his whole set. He smashed his guitar. He burnt it. He set it on fire. It's With like, lighter fluid. Well, anybody that does that is like, dude, you know, he did that. Right. Right? And that's the thing about it, about, about the moment that he, he was in the moment. He was a separate planet. You know what? But he also, he created the moment that he was in. He was part, like the Beatles, I mean, they were part of the time, but they created the time. Right. Right. right, like Jimmy had just literally created the time that he was a part. No of. question about it. And that's what's so awesome. No about question it. about it. So I mean, that's the thing, man. You know, to me, like every, you know, we've seen everything, been there, done that, blah blah blah. So the thing about that is that's not new. 
That 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 idea, right. been there, done that, is not a new thing. Right. We think it's new, but it's not. People have been talking that forever. Jimi Hendrix went and did something very different, and it's still possible to do something very different. It's still different. It's still different, you know. So Look that's at, that's me, you know. So I'm just saying, hey man, if you the Jimi Hendrix or something, you just need to find out what you the Jimi Hendrix of. That's it. Well, Mr. Bernard Reed, I got to tell you, it was a pleasure and a treat, and I really, really thank you so much well, for giving us time. You, thank you. I want you to blow it up tonight. Kick some ass up there. Hey, Jimmy I, will be I make, I make no claims. Jimmy will no. be there with you. He'll be with oh, you. I hope so. Thanks, my man. <laughs> Have a great night. Have a good show. And there you go. Madhouse TV. The Maverick Soul Hour with Tommy Moore. Unbelievable. Bernie Reed from Living Color. Thank you. Later. It doesn't get any better than Madhouse. Woo!